You have to unmute yourself. So thank you so much for the invitation. Again, I am I'm honored to be part of your group and we I'm going to present um, this technique that we have developed in our lab. It's called magnetically activated cell enrichment or we call it MACE using glycan coated magnetic nanoparticles. So I would like to preempt by uh, thanking my students for generating the data. As we know, we don't go to the lab and generate this data. Our students do, and so I just want to express that appreciation. So let's go to um, the presentation. Um, my presentation will go from just the rationale. I think every this is a scientific group, so you know the rationale for uh, rapid extraction or rapid uh, sample preparation, the overall strategy. And then I will demonstrate how that extracted material or pathogen, especially DNA, is uh, detected, and then what are the implications. So we are familiar with a uh, foodborne illness because many of us are working on the food matrices and we know it's a cause of death and especially globally, it's uh, close to 500,000 deaths per year. And the vulnerable populations are the children, elderly, pregnant and immunocompromised people and especially those in low income countries. And in the US it's a big cost to the, the economy. So we know that rapid test needs rapid sample preparation. We have so many developments in rapid tests right now, but the sample preparation continue to be a challenge. So our strategy is that if we can just do a rapid extraction, we can proceed to our rapid detection. So this is just an illustration of how we were trying to develop uh, or move towards cell phone based uh, detection and um, processing so that then our, we can really address the needs of rapid tests for, especially for low income uh, or low resource settings. So here's the, uh, stra uh, basically the workflow. We call that the smart biosensor, which means screening and multi-array recognition biosensing technology. And the idea is to extract it rapidly. And extraction for us takes about 10 to 15, 20 minutes maximum and then extract the DNA and test the DNA. So my presentation will focus more, more on the extraction and the DNA dis, uh, illustration or detection is just an illustration. So the mechanism goes like this. We have magnetic nanoparticles, which are on the top here and with the bacteria. These magnetic nanoparticles are coated with glycans and glycans are designed to do a carbohydrate protein binding on the cell surface. So if with a magnetic, uh, when there is bacteria, the glycans are attached to the cell wall. Now, very interestingly, the attachment is very specific, site specific. So we know that these sites, for example, if you can see my, my cursor, we believe that these are the sites where there's a ca carbohydrate prote protein binding. The interesting part is if there is binding, you will see a matting on the tube which is the, the spread of the bacteria on the, the surface. Whereas if there is no mag, mag bacteria, the, the magnetic nanoparticles are clamped over here. So we, I'll just go straight to our data so that we can uh, spend the time on the ex, uh, discussion. We found that magnetic extraction is influenced by cell morphology. And you can see that these are just an illustration of E. coli 15787, which represents E. coli cell as Staph aureus, Listeria monocytogenes. And Staph aureus clump, uh, come in clusters. So you see this typical cluster size. And these are just the uh, mean length of the bacteria. And below is the graphical illustration of that, that the S aureus are uh, clustered. So keep that in mind because the extraction efficiency will sort of give that uh, implication. <clears throat> Now, these are TM images of E. coli 15787. As I said earlier, there are specific sites. The magnetic nanoparticles do not uh, attach to all over the surface, which is a typical, uh, the theory is that some uh, theory says that it's a charge, charge uh, based, but we believe that it's not only charge, but also the protein, ca carbohydrate protein binding or glycan protein binding surface of the cell wall. So you can see that these are typical of the bacteria for E. coli, 
you would see the magnetic nanoparticles on at the tip and also at the bottom. And when this is the bottom, we believe that this is a, a flagella. This is just a, a clump. There's a lot of magnetic nanoparticles on here, but you will see that the magnetic nanoparticles attach very much to the flagella of the bacteria. This is an example of Staphylococcus, I mean, Salmonella type femurium. You can see also that this stretch here is the flagella. And if you make this a, a bigger, you can see some kind of string coming out of here. And that is where the magnetic nanoparticles attach. Again, the E. coli. And we know that this is, the, again, the flagella over here. And there's the tip, the head, shall we say the head of the bacterium. And, but the interesting part is, and for um, drug-resistant cell, cell bacteria, the surface is destroyed. And so the, the binding change, they change the binding. So again, uh, the morphology is a major factor. This is, this bacteria, bacterium here is drug resistant. This is E. coli drug resistant. And you can see that the bacterium is uh, different and binding is different. So we look at it from the uh, high powered microscope. And you can see that the Bacillus cereus comes into what we call head to tail type of um, morphology. And then E. coli is dispersed. Salmonella is dispersed. And L Listeria monocytogenes also go into head to tail type of binding. And we know that we have observed that the magnetic extraction and concentration factors follow this type of, of morphologies. So this is the concentration factors of foodborne bacteria in PBS. And you can see that Staph aureus has very high concentration factor, close to 50 uh, units, which, is, which demonstrates that the Staph aureus comes in, they come in clump or clusters, and that, then the Bacillus cereus come in head to tail. Listeria also come in head to tail, but there is lower than Bacillus cereus but the lowest would be E. coli and salmonella because they come dispersed. Here's the plate count of just a view of how the magnetic nanoparticles affect this. This is a wastewater. The top is the water extracted with magnetic nanoparticles and uh, 25 micro, microliters of that uh, concentrated uh, sample is uh, plated. And you can see there's a lot of bacteria compared to a direct plated, which is just, this is even, four times in volume, 100 microliters, and you can see the big difference in the plating. So you can see the magnetic nanoparticles are extracting the bacteria from the sample. We plated it in uh, selective agars, and so you can see which bacteria are being uh, pulled out. And it's just very interesting that in this particular example, the direct plated does not show E. coli 015787, which is mauve color, in uh, chrome agar, but the extracted ones show several E. coli 015787. And we know 015787 is a major problem in water and in food safety. And then the other one is this uh, agar here doesn't so vibri, I mean sa salmonella, but look at salmonella. There's a lot of salmonella in the extracted uh, sample. Salmonella is pink. And the vibrio, uh, there's just a few vibrio here in the sample. And there's a lot of Vibrio um, species in this extracted material. So the magnetic nanoparticles are very good at extracting low levels of bacteria. Here's another example of uh, wastewater that, in fact, the wastewater is able to be cleaned a little bit with just the magnetic extraction. And this takes about five minutes, five to, uh, five to 10 minutes maximum. And the sample volume is a factor. So when you have only a small volume, it has a very high concentration factor. At 100, uh, 100 ml bottles, there's only four, but 100 ml bag, there's 7.5. So the material also, I, I be we believe is the thickness of the bottle that is preventing uh, the effect of the magnetic field. So sample volume and material, they have a uh, effect on the uh, extraction efficiency. And then we look at the bacterial concentration. What is the concentration factor uh, when the bacteria has different concentrations? 
And we, know, we noticed that at low concentration, because we have a fixed amount of uh, magnetic nanoparticles, the at low concentration has the highest uh, concentration factor or extraction efficiency for uh, E. coli and for uh, let's see, monocytogenes. But the interesting part but is yeah, as, the, yeah. as the oh. concentration increases for E. coli 157 and remember these, they come in dispersed. Uh, they have a decreasing, decreasing amount of extraction efficiency. Whereas the monosanthogenes, because they are they come in uh, head to tail type of uh, clumping, they increase in concentration uh, factor. So the higher the, uh, the amount of cell concentration, the more clumping, the more um, head to tail type of clumping that the bacteria demonstrate and it comes with the magnetic nanoparticle concentration factor. So it's a very insightful, very insightful result for us that um, the morphology comes into the picture. And then we look at pH. Is there a, a function with pH? Of if, if, if the magnetic nanoparticle is a function of charge, will there be affected by pH? And we notice that uh, the pH changes. There's a higher concentration at lower pH compared to a, a higher pH. And so similar trend for all E. coli, salmonella, and listeria. So pH is, is a factor. We operate typically at six or seven, which is a, a neutral normal type of uh, pH. And so this is the range here compared to a, a higher, a lower pH. Then we look at now with the food matrix. Is the food matrix, will the food matrix have an influence? Of course, the food matrix has an influence. So with Staphylococcus aureus, milk, has high concentration factor at pH six. So we adjusted the pH in PBS. And then the regular uh, PBS uh, dilution compared to um, this, you can see that at higher pH, the bacteria is again uh, expressly um, isolated compared to the regular diluent of seven uh, pH seven. So milk, sausage, ham and romaine have the effect, the matrix effect. For Listeria monocytogenes, the same, the same situation. Uh, there's an interesting story here that sausage, when we uh, isolate sausage from the original material, sausage is uh, clean. Like there is no contamination in sausage because this is processed. But the interesting part, if the bacteria or the sample has a bit of contamination, it looks like Listeria monocytogenes lose out to the other contaminants. So uh, there's a problem here with milk and I think it's more on the fat materials. But the, the story here is that definitely food matrix is influencing the concentration factor. This is again E. coli. And you will see that romaine let lettuce and spinach have higher extraction efficiency compared to flour and chicken salad. And again, the matrix in these uh, food foods are would influence that. So there's a lot of sorry. We we are not food science uh, major, so we cannot say like oh let's look at the food matrix because like we are we're going away from our expertise. But if some people would look at this data. This is, there are a lot of stories in this one. And then of course, if we put side by side spinach, for example, and how the E. coli, salmonella, and hysteria would go, they have different concentration factors, although they are not statistically significant with each other because of the spread. So in general, they are similar in um, concentration factor. And, but for broccoli, very interestingly, salmonella has a, the most concentration factor for broccoli compared to E. coli and Listeria. So then we go into like the detection. So can we detect, can we detect the extracted bacteria with our DNA-based biosensor? So they, we used gold nanoparticle, gold nanoparticles for our biosensor. The, it's a straightforward method. We have our sample DNA sample, the, uh, our probe, and then gold nanoparticles. We put them in the thermocycler. 
heat it for at 95 to denature, anneal at 55 degrees, then we add HCl. And if it is positive, the gold nanoparticles embedded in the target DNA and as probe are protected. Whereas if they don't have the uh, sample, the gold nanoparticles are exposed to uh, the HCl and the aggregate. So the in on the right is the equivalent um, spectrum. Gold nanoparticles peak at 520. So there's a little bit of shift in here from 520, whereas in the lower example, which is uh, not negative, you have a shift to the right, a right shift of the spectrum of the, of the peak. So that will be the how we will monitor this. So let's look at the specificity. Control here is water. And then you have um, a biosensor, or this, in this case, this is a PBS for now. We have the E. coli 015787. This is, the probe is designed for E. coli 015787, especially SPXA1 gene. And then E. coli uh, C3000, Salmonella, Listeria, Bacillus cereus. And you can see that the target is red and the rest are blue. And that says positive. If you look at the peak wavelength, you will see the shift in the peak wavelength from 520. You will see that uh, the E. coli, the target has the lowest shift, which is uh, at close to 520, which is red and control and the rest have a higher peak shift. That means that they are going red shifted and going blue in color. This is the sensitivity. We can detect as low as 2.5 nanograms per microliter of the sample. And you will also see a hook effect in the detection that at higher concentrations, um, the, it tapers off. So this is a typical hook effect of biosensors. And we can have a linear the detection between 2.5 to 10. So then let's look at the romaine lettuce that we have extracted the bacteria. This is E. coli from the romaine and no romaine here. This is a water control. And you can see that we can detect E. coli from extracted from romaine, extracted with the magnetic nanoparticles. And you can see the shift also in terms of peak shift from 520, the target has a lower peak shift, which is red, whereas control to the uh, water control and no romaine has a higher shift, shifting to the right. And this is again, uh, how we, for now, how we're quantifying the detection. This is a flower, a specificity from flower. We looked at different targets. This is the control water. There's the target at, uh, at the uh, extracted DNA. This is the target at 60 nanograms per microliter target DNA. And then uh, these are non-target DNA extracted also from, from the sample, but without any, uh, some, without any target. And then this is just the uh, natural microflora. And you can see also that the target has the lower has the lowest peak shift as well as the target at 60 nanograms per microliter compared to the control as well as the non-target. So this is the color of the target from flower. This the the E. coli was extracted from flower matrix, and then this is flower with no E. coli. We also looked at like is the detection. Um, robust in terms of researchers. So we have one researcher do it and a second researcher do it. And we can see that we have the same result in terms of peak shift. And you can see that uh, the biosensor is robust in terms of use, user friendliness. Again, this detection system is completed within 40 minutes. Now we look at different types of materials. Can we um, can we extract or can we still detect materials that were extracted in January compared to materials extracted in uh, 2021? 
And we were able to see that the materials, the DNA extracted in 2022, it has similar result with the ones the DNA extracted in 2021. So we can see that the biosensor is also robust and also the magnetic non magnetically extracted DNA is robust. So the, in summary, we can say that um, MACE is an effective, is very effective in complex matrices and we can finish everything in 10 to 20 minutes. It is, uh, MNP extraction is uh, influenced by cell morphology, cell concentration, pH and food matrix. And the DNA instruction detection is feasible from food, food extracted, uh, MNP extracted bacteria. It's rapid in 40 minutes, inexpensive and sensitive and specific. So I, I want to like to thank my graduate students and people in the lab for helping me generate this data and for our presentations here. Our lab is, this is the website for our lab. Thank you so much for your attention and thank you for the invitation again. So I finished my presentation and Andrew, you take over. Um, sample preparation step.